Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike from Mobox. Just to let you know, we have a new curated music channel called Mobox Music, new releases every day of the week. Go check that out. Anyways, in this video, we're gonna be looking at this cool new abstract background. So it kind of looks liquidy, looks like it's layered or something. Um, so we're gonna be creating this in After Effects. And I just wanna walk you through my thought process here, utilizing some of the inspiration from Eli's tutorial, as well as um, Mikey's tutorial. So let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects here and you can see that um, I have my abstract background um, already flowing and it's from this composition here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a new composition composition new, I'm gonna label this tutorial. So um, if you wanna download this project file, you can at our um, on our Patreon account. So let's create a layer new solid, and I'm just gonna make it red. The color actually, funny enough, doesn't matter right now, um, but I'm gonna add a few effects to it. What we wanna actually use is um, search for noise, search for fractal noise. So he used turbulent noise, we're gonna be using fractal noise. The benefit of using fractal noise here is in the evolution options, you can actually cycle the evolution, which is what we need. Turbulent noise does not allow you to do that in any way that's very simple. So how you use this is you wanna uh, check that box, cycle evolution, how many revolutions you wanna cycle, and then, so I'm doing one, and so I'm gonna set a keyframe for evolution and I'm gonna to go to the end of the composition and I'm gonna set this to one. And so you'll see that when I play this out, it will loop as it comes around. Now, if I wanted this to do two evolutions, I will just make this two and then I would set this cycle to two. Now, the downside of this is that you can't create animations less than one. So I can't say cycle 0.5, I don't think. Yeah, if you cycle 0.5, it just goes to, to one. So that's what I did. That's why this composition is 10 seconds. Normally I like to loop maybe four to five seconds. Um, but anyways, for this tutorial, this should be fine. So now I'm gonna add some other effects called posterize. Just gonna add that on top. And now is when we wanna start um, messing with, with these contrast and brightness. So I'm gonna increase the contrast, maybe decrease the brightness. Um, one thing I definitely wanna do is decrease the the complexity and you notice that it's kind of uh cube cubular or something i don't know how to say that but it's very cubular uh, i can't talk so i'm just gonna actually go to maybe max and um maybe spline and that gives us kind of a nice um kind of softer look here now under posturize if you increase this it will increase the the levels um the number of bandings i guess you can call that I think five looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna increase and decrease the brightness until I get something that I, I think looks pretty cool. And I think that looks good. So if I just play this back, it should loop perfectly because again, this evolution is one um, full loop and it's set to one. So it should loop perfectly. Let's see what it looks like. And it does, it loops perfectly. Great, so that's step one. Um, step two is I'm gonna add a layer new solid and this is where I'm gonna make my background color. So I'm just gonna name this background and put that just below. And I'm gonna change the blending method on my abstract layer. And I'm gonna change this to overlay. And I can increase and decrease the brightness here. So what you'll notice is that it lightens everything up. So under the background, I'm gonna actually add a fill and I am going to make it much darker. I'm gonna make it darker and then I'm gonna bring the transparency down. Okay, so that looks pretty cool, but you can make it look a little bit cooler by doing by duplicating the abstract layer. And this is also kind of what I got from Mikey's tutorial. Um, funny enough to do the, the topographic map is that he then added find edges. So I'm gonna add find edges actually on this one and I'm gonna set this one to, I'm sure I'm gonna add a, a blur as well, Gaussian blur, and just kind of blur that out. And what you end up getting is you get kind of like a, a really nice kind of gradient in between the layers. So I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, so another thing I'm gonna just show you real quick is this, you can actually make this look even crazier. Um, on this line overlay, if you actually change this to like, um, difference doesn't really do anything, but hue, maybe color, no. Let me go over to my example and show you what I meant 
hard mix for example created like some crazy like psychedelic looking thing um I'm just going to go through these one by one. wonder if I could scroll. No, I can't scroll through. But anyways, like, oh, here's another crazy one. Classic color dodge. Just color dodge again creates like some kind of crazy, like crazy examples. So one thing that people ask me all the time is, hey, how do you get that really cool camera angle? Um, and so I'm going to show you how I get this camera angle. I'm gonna go composition new comp. I'm gonna name this tutorial. I'm gonna add the tutorial background in and I'm gonna make it a 3D layer by hitting this little cube icon. Hit R on the keyboard and rotate it. Maybe negative 90 and bring it down. And I'm gonna add a layer new camera. Set, the, set it to a 35 millimeter and what's great with the camera is now I can kind of adjust my adjust my uh, angle. I'm gonna make it a left view here. So I like that angle, but wow, man, now I have to scale this up, but if I scale it up, then you get like, it doesn't really look that great. So I'm gonna actually just use the, um, the reptile tool. And I'm gonna set it to unfold. And I'm just going to increase this until it is off screen. I often add a camera because I usually do want to do make some changes. I usually add some motion to the camera. It's a little bit easier when you actually have the camera tool instead of just the layer. Okay, so great. Now I have all of this and you can see the seams there, but um, I always add uh, depth of field. So I'm just going to the camera options, add depth of field and increase the aperture. Pretty intensive on your computer, so you know it may take a little bit longer depending on your system. And then I can see that my point of focus seems to be about here. If you want to see your point of focus better, you could actually see this line here is your point of focus um, or your focus distance. So I'm gonna just increase that out until my focal distance, really, I, I really want it to just overlap with that uh, cross section there because that should be about the center of the camera point, which is about right there. And I think that that looks good. And now I'm just going to maybe increase the aperture again. And I think that that looks cool. So I'm gonna again hit Control S because at any moment After Effects can crash. And I'm gonna add a layer new uh, adjustment layer. And this is when I like to add some noise. Um, I'm gonna just add some just regular noise because this one, uh, whenever you see these new icons, that actually means they're GPU accelerated, which is great if you have a good GPU. Set that to maybe five be even eight. Hit spacebar to play and this bad boy is going to take ages to render. Okay, we're back. So basically I actually reduced the frame rate down to 24 frames. Um, that noise overlay really just destroys any sort of um, hope of having a fast render time. So um, anyways, that is pretty much it. It's looping pretty nicely. I mean, obviously you could do some other creative stuff, but um, again, you know, just mess around with that, uh, that additional line overlay and, you know, you can make some really cool different things. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out other videos on the channel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.